Alrighty, I know what you're probably wondering. You're wondering, what happened to the hair? Bruh, where did you lose that? Okay, fine, I lost it in the barber shop. I forgot to tell him to give it back. It's on the floor somewhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello, everybody. I'm Karar, and today we're gonna do some use ago because a lot of you guys want more use ago videos. I want more use ago videos, and a lot of you guys have wanted me to do some of the silver problems in previous content. So, today we're gonna be doing the second silver problem, and unfortunately, I couldn't live solve it for you guys because I did the live solve. I recorded it, and then afterwards, the file got corrupted. It's so annoying, it happened twice in like the past week, I'm sorry. But I will try to explain my thought process and like how I went about solving it, and hopefully that'll be helpful. And I will also live code it from scratch, I will not use my previous code to help me out. I will just live code it from scratch so you guys could see how I think about coding. So let's jump into it! Alrighty, years ago, 2019 December contest silver, problem 2 meetings, alrighty. Two barns are located at position 0 and L, okay, and they're on a one-dimensional number line. There are also N cows at distinct locations on this number line. Each cow is located at some position XI and moving in a positive or negative direction. Okay. And each cow also has a weight WI. All cows move at constant velocity until one of the following events occur. They stop at a barn, or they meet, and then they switch to velocity. So basically they bonk into each other and go in the opposite direction. Okay. So at this point, like before I read any of the other things, the first thing I noticed is that like, if you don't care about weights, it's just as if the cows just went through each other. Cause like, let me just draw you an example. Cause this is like one of the most important things you had to notice for this problem. It's basically like, okay, let's say there's a cow going right and a cow going left, right? And then they go to the center, they collide, and then one goes this way and one goes the other way. But this literally looks the exact same thing as if they just went through each other. Like, if, I can tell the difference between the dots so. In, if we don't have weights on these dots, it's literally the same as if they went through each other. Okay, we'll use the fact later, but this is like the first thing I noticed when I was solving the problem. Alright, let's read this. Let T be the earliest point when the sum of the weights of the cow that have stopped moving due to reaching one of the barns is at least half of the sum of the weights of all cows. Please determine the total number of meetings between pairs of cow during the time 0 to T, including at time T. So basically we're given that n is less than 5 times 10 to the 4, so that means that we have to have an n log n algorithm. So no n squared, no n cubed, no n squared log n, we have to do it in n log n. So I have like two ideas for approaching like this kind of problem. Like the first thing I thought I tried to do was like do it greedily, right? Like figure out which cow like gets kicked off first, then take it off, then consider the rest of the cows and kick one off and then so on and so forth. and like progressively count the number of meetings and count the total number of stopped cows. That ended up not working, so I tried a different strategy, which is basically find t first, find a way to find t, and once you find t, finding the meeting numbers is actually a lot easier. So now the tricky part about this problem is actually finding t. So let us look at our input format, let us look. So we're given that the barn is 0 to 5, and then we're given there's a weight 1 guy at 1, a weight 2 guy at 2, and a weight 3 guy at 3. And then this guy's going right, and then this guy is going left, and this guy's going left. Okay, so now I wanted to figure out what we could figure out just by looking at this diagram. Like, it's kind of hard to figure out the time just by looking at this, because like, okay, 1 is pretty easy because it only has 1 collision, but then 2 gets kind of weird because it collides and it collides again, and then it collides again, it's like weird. Okay. So that's kind of hard. But the one thing that we could figure out is which side something ends on, right? Like, we know that 1, we know that 1 hits the 2 and then goes to the left, so we know that 1 ends on this side, then 2 hits the 1 and then goes to the right and ends on this side, and then we, actually, no, 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 I'm trolling, I'm trolling. 2 goes to the left, hits the 1, then goes and hits the 3, and then it goes back to 0, so 2 ends on this side, and then 3 hits the 2 that's coming back at it, and then goes to the 5, so 3 ends here. Okay, now another thing that you might notice is that like, if a cow is between two cows, it can't go through them because like, according to this, it'll just bounce off of them. It can't go through another cow. Even though if you don't care about the actual identity of the cow, it's like they go through each other, they don't actually go through each other. So, if cow 2 is between 1 and 3, it's never going to go past 1 or 3. It's just going to stay between 1 and 3. So that means, if 2 ends on the left side, that means 1 has to end on the left side before 2. For example, like how could 2 like get to this 0 without 1 getting to 0? It doesn't make sense. There's no way for that to happen. So these are the two key things you have to notice. First, if you don't care about their identity, then it's as if they go through each other. However, if you do care about their identity, you know that if our current cow goes and ends on the left side, everything to the left of it also has to end on the left side. 
And if it's going to the right, then everything on the right of it has to go to the right side. So, we know that in this case, everything to the left of 2 goes left, and everything to the right of 3 goes right. To make this a little bit more concrete, let's try to do a more complex example. This input is kind of boring because there's only 3 cows. What's the point of 3 cows? What can you do with 3 cows? You can't even get enough milk to have cereal with. Alright, so let's say that we have 0, and 9 over here, and then there's a guy here, 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 here. And there's 7, 5, 3, 1. Okay, wait up. Oh yeah, there was another one, 8. Okay. So now we have all these cool, beautiful, dotty cows, and we'll give them some direction. Right, left, left, right, right. No, let's say it's then. It's got going left. So let's just ignore all these weights, right? Let's just, like, not... Let's pretend that all these cows are exactly the same. Then we can just pretend that these dots just go through each other. So this dot right here will just pass through everything and get to the right side. Okay. And that'll take 8 seconds. So... This dot takes 8 seconds to reach the right side, then this dot takes 3 seconds to reach the left side, this one takes 5 seconds to reach the left side, and then this one takes 2 seconds to reach the right side, and then this one takes 8 seconds to reach the left. So now we know the times at which a dot reaches the side, but we don't know which cows these are because, like, in our assumption, we said, oh, these cows, we don't care what they are, only then we could say they, like, go through each other. If we knew what they were, then they actually go in the opposite direction, so... Which is only because we don't know their identity. However, we know that if something goes to the left side, everything to the left of it is going to go left as well. So like essentially, you could draw a divider between the things that go left and the things that go right. So let's, let's just see which ones go left. So this one's going to bounce off this 3 and then go left, so this will end on the left. And then the 3 is going to bounce off the 1, then it's going to bounce off the 5 and then end on the left as well. Then this 5 is going to bounce off the 3, and then it's going to bounce off the 7, which is bouncing off the 8, and go to the left. And then this 7 is going to bounce off the 8, then bounce off the 5, and go right. And then this 8 is going to bounce off the 7, and go right. Wait a minute. Hmm, 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 hmm. We have the same number of times ending on the left as there are things going to the left. And that makes sense, right? Because every single cow has to have an ending time, right? But we also know that the 1 ends before the 3, because it's left of it. 3 ends before the 5, because everything to the left of the 5 has to end before it, and s same for the 7 and 8. So, we could pair these with their times. It's crazy. So, 1 ends on the left, A, it pairs with this earliest time, because it's the first one on the left to finish. Then the 3 pairs with this 5 over here, and then the 5 pairs with the 8. On the other side, we know that 7 takes the longest to get to the right, because it's on the left of 8. So, 7 pairs with 8, and then... 8 will take 2 seconds to get to the right. We basically paired every single cow with its time. So now we can just go through the times and see at what point we reach our half point, and then we know t. And once we know t, we'll have to figure out how to get the meeting. Okay, so let's just sort this. Let us say that the weight is equal just to its position. So this cow at 1 is going to have a weight 1, this cow at 3 is going to have a weight 3, and this cow at 5 has a weight 5, and then this cow at 7 has a weight 7, and this cow at 8 has a weight 8. Okay. So we're going to say at, at time 2, the 1 at 8 finishes because of this one. And then at time 3, the 1 with 1 finishes. At time 5, the 1 with 3 weight finishes. At time 8, 7, and at time 8, 5 also finishes. So our total weight, we know, if we just add up all these things, we get 8 plus 1 plus 3 is 12 plus 9, and 19 plus 5 is 24. So once we get a 12, we're at our halfway point. So let's just go through it. So at t equals 2, we got 8. At t equals 3, we got 9 complete. At t equals 5, we got 12 complete. Dang, we're done. So, t equals 5. t is equal to 5. Very nice. Now we have t. So it should be pretty easy to find the meeting numbers, but I'm not sure how to do it yet. Or I was not sure how to do it yet, but... This is not a life solve, I'm sorry. So let's say we know t. How do we find how many meetings this thing goes through? So let us draw our fancy example again. 0, 9, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8. Nice. Okay, now we don't really care about the weights because all collisions are equal in our eyes. Just like all men are created equal, all collisions are created equal, okay? So we don't care which two cows collide. We just need to know which that a cow collides. We just need to know that a meeting occurred. So we can still use our assumption that the cows go through each other. So in 5 seconds, this guy, this dot at 1 is going to travel all the way to 6, right? And then this one is going to travel all the way past 0. Well, it's technically going to stop at 0, but that doesn't matter. 
5 is going to go all the way back to 0, and then 7 is going to go all the way to 9, and then 8 is going to go back to 8 minus 5 is going to go to 3 in 5 seconds. So basically, anytime two dots cross, like go through each other, that's a meeting, right? We already knew that. So we just got to find out how many times uh, things cross. So we know that during this time, 1 crosses with 3, it crosses with 5, and it crosses with 8. Like, because we know that the ending points of all these three things are on the other side of the end point of 1. So they do cross at some point. 7 only crosses with 8, so we have 3 from our 1, and 2 from our 7, no, 1 from our 7, so we have a total of 4 collisions. Now the reason why we don't even have to care about the left guys is because in every collision there's a right and a left guy. So if you count all the collisions of the right guy and all the collisions of the left guy, you're counting each collision twice. So you can technically do that, but you have to divide by 2. Just for example, like, uh, 3 collides with 1 thing, 5 collides with 2 things, so that's 3 total, and then, oh no no, 3 collides with 1 thing, 5 collides with 1 thing, uh, 8 collides with 2 things, so that would be another 4, and then 8 over 2 is 4. Very nice. So we have our algorithm, let us code this boy up. Alrighty, so we already have our f ins and f outs, so now we just gotta make our variables and then read them in. So we gotta have int n and l, and we gotta have all our 3 arrays. But actually, I'm going to store everything just in a pair vector. So basically, like when you have to sort a lot of things, you always want to keep them together. Because if you have them in separate arrays, you can't sort them together. So we're just going to have it all in one vector. Rebel's being annoying and marking it red, but this is fine syntax. Okay, I have the best syntax in the world. It's a fact. I'm an Olympic syntaxer. But anyways, like the point of this vector pair int int Pair, pair, whatever, that many pairs, it basically is going to start x in the first thing, and then in the second thing, it's going to start the weight and the direction of the third and cow that we're looking at. Now, the reason I put x first is because when you do the C++ sorting algorithm, it automatically sorts by the first thing. And the first thing we want to do is sort by the x coordinate so we have all the cows in order. Alright, so let's read in all this nonsense. These curly braces are how you do pairs in C++, by the way. It's a useful skill. You should use these curly braces. They're very epic. Alrighty, we read everything in. Now what do we gotta do? Now we gotta actually do our algorithm. Okay. So first things first, let's figure out all the times. So we're gonna have to find the time that things reach the left side and time that things reach the right side. So let's make two vectors for that. So basically, L times is gonna store all the time it takes for things to get to the left side of the left barn. And then the R times is gonna store the time that it takes things to get to the right barn. So we'll just move through all the bo cowy boys. Oh wait, first thing for the store this XWD. Now they're all in order of X coordinate, and then now we can do our algorithm. Okay, technically we don't even need to sort it. But let's just sort it, because I think that's cool. Actually, we will have to use the sorted version later, so we're good, we're good. Stop doubting yourself, dude. Yeah, I talked to myself, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, so, what we gotta do is for the cow, if it's going to the right, we know that this dot, like, we don't care about the weight, right? This dot is gonna reach the right side, like, in n, I mean like in the length minus the current position, because that's to go the remaining distance to the end. If it's going left, however, it'll just reach it in x time, like if x is its current location. Because that's to go from x to 0, so it'll be epic. So if d, or actually xwd i dot second dot second is equal equal to negative 1, meaning it's going left, then we just add to l time dot push back, we add the x coordinate of this. Otherwise, we add to the right time, and we say the length of the thing minus our current x position. Okay, so since we're going from smallest x coordinates to largest x coordinate, our left times are going to be in order from smallest to largest. However, our right coordinates are going to be in order from greatest to least. So when we go through the left time, the right time, and try to pair them with the cows, we gotta go through it in the right order. So let's first make a vector to store all this, to store the pair of the time to the weight it's adding to our total. The reason I name it like this, like TW or XWD, is just to remind me which variables are being stored where. So like in this pair, the first thing is going to be time and the second thing is going to be weight, because time is what we want to sort based on. So we'll loop through all the times in L times, and we know that the first, and we know that the smallest time corresponds to the first cow that's going to reach the left side, then the second cow that's going to reach the left side, and so on and so forth. So we can just do this. TW.pushback, and then we want L times I. And then we also want the corresponding cow, xw, xwd i dot second dot first. So we want to pair it with the weight. And put our curly braces, whoops. Alright, and then same thing for right, except we had to be careful this time because the times are backward. So we'll start from 0 to r time dot size. 
But I think that we should first reverse the array so it's in the same order as the left side so we could do it easier. So let's reverse the R times, R times, and then we still want the weight, but we want the weight from the other side. Because left side corresponds with all the guys on the left that are going left, right? But right is on the other side of the left. So like this is the point where everything on the left is going to go to the left. But on the right, we start from the end, and we want to say this guy has the least time, and then this guy has the next least time. So we had to start from the end. So this would be n minus i minus 1. So now we've got all the pairs, let's sort this based on time, and then we'll go through it and find what our t actually is. Alright, now we have to have a total, like, what our current total weight is. But we should also have what our, like, actual, like, our full total weight, the sum of all the weights. So we should do that in the beginning. And then while this t uh, running total is less than our desired thing, thing uh while this hmm i could talk wait wait okay so while this total our running total is less than half of our actual total we we will keep going and increasing which ones we take so let's have a we first need an iterator though so while two times tot is less than tot weight the reason i use two times is so that we don't have to deal with like fractions and nonsense we're just going to add to our uh, running total and then we're going to add to our iterator and then once we have enough total our time is just going to be the time corresponding with the last one we added this is bad coding practice i'm sorry but i basically just reuse t i'm sorry i'm sorry all right so now we have t let's do this thing for the other stuff so now we gotta we have t and we want to find this number of meetings so basically we consider all the right ones that are going right and see how many of the left ones they collide into that's literally just the same thing as saying how many of these endpoints of the things going left are between the start and endpoints of the thing going right that we're looking at right now. So we know that the farthest two things could be away from each other for them to still collide at time t would be 2t, right? Because this thing would go t to the right and then this thing would go t to the left. So as long as this one is within 2t of this one, they're going to collide. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to keep a sorted array of the x coordinates of the left pointing ones and then compare them to the ones that are pointing right. So let's just make a left x coordinate uh, array. Vector into left x and then if the thing is pointing left then we're just going to put it on the left. So let's sort this lx. So we have to sum this across multiple cows that are moving right, right? So we have to keep a running total so int answer is equal to zero and then we had to loop through all the counts. Now remember we only had to count this if they're going right so we're going to do if uh, if xwdi dot second dot second is equal equal to one, then we'll do stuff. So basically, you know, any like any left moving cow that's in this range here is gonna collide with this dot over here. So we basically have to find the number of cows that are less than this point over here, and the number of cows that are less than this point, and then subtract. So this is gonna count all this, and then we subtract this out, and then we'll, we're left with all the ones that are in the set. So to answer, we add upper bound of lx dot begin lx dot end and then we want to have xwd i dot first plus 2t and then we subtract this from lower bound of lx dot begin lx dot end and then the just the normal x all right and then we just see how it answer at the end very nice this should work let us test it out oh oh <laughs> i forgot one angle brace boy all right hopefully this works epic so three five one 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 two two negative one three three negative one two very nice okay hopefully this actually works in the actual submission let's do it all right please work i bet very nice all right we did it all right thank you guys for watching i'm sorry i couldn't do a live call because the video got messed up i'm sorry but hopefully this was helpful if you guys have any suggestions on how i could improve my teaching because i'm not really a great teacher i know that but just let me know. I'm happy to help out. So, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. I will be doing the third Yusuko problem for Silver for this contest because a couple of you guys are after that one too, so stay posted. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.